You know, they're, they're selling y'all wolf tickets, people. You're eating them right up. Hey, pussy, are you still there? I back. Trust me, I back. But uh, I'm not impressed by your performance. You do nothing. You do nothing. Shut your fucking mouth, you do nothing. You do fucking nothing. Now, what do you do nothing? I'll tell you what, you know, I'll tell you what, bro. You know, I was out there, I was fighting all the hitters, bro. You ain't fought no hitters. Come on, guys. Normal. I'm not, I'm not saying I would fight you. I, I would kill you. John, do you think, do you, so, so, John, do you think I'm just going to sit there and let you kill me, John? I mean, really. No, no, don't be scared, homie. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the fuck he wants. I am going to beat you into the living death. Maybe that's your, that's your job, but where I come from, you know, people like that get slapped. That's fucking illegal. Nick <laughs> you just shook up the world. How's that feel? And I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Yeah, this is a simulated death match. And you haven't simulated anybody's death yet. I said it last year. We're not here just to take part. We're here to take over. What is the game plan going in against him? The game plan is you go in there, hit him with some good shit, don't get hit, and uh, come home with a pocket full of cash. Who the fuck is that guy? Everybody's on steroids. The whole UFC, everybody. I'm gonna go home tonight. I'm gonna drink a Coors Light. That's a Coors Light because Bud Light won't pay me nothing. Do you want to be a fighter? That is my question. Any of you radio personalities think you want smoke? <laughs> Call me Mr. Chimney. I want smoke. Yes, yes. What is up, Patreon family, MCR family? What is up? It's just a uh, first edition championship rounds. Um, sort of a continuation from standing eight count from TBV for those that sort of knew that platform and knew that sort of you know format. This is basically. The platform for you, you guys to get your questions and your topics answered, discussed on the show. Um, especially since, obviously, we do not have caller capabilities at this point. This is probably the best way to get you guys heard on the show, you know, guaranteed. Um, that's why, when you know, going forward, Sundays, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, every Sunday, Patreon only, um, there will be a topic question post probably posted on Wednesday. I'm thinking that's giving you guys enough time to put it on there. I don't want to put it too far out to where you guys forget about it and then never comment on it. Uh, you know, where I, where I have to sort of put a reminder post like today. So I don't want to do that. I'll, so Wednesday, I think is good enough for you guys. Um, shout out to Nyjah, Curtis, Igloo in the chat. What's up, everyone? Um, but yeah, so basically go comment uh, your topic, your question on that post. And it gets guaranteed to be discussed and talked about on this show. Um, and it's, again, it could be about anything. Um, I know that was a couple questions at first from you guys, um, was, is this boxing only? Is this everything? This is everything. You want to ask about New Orleans, like Nigel did, you know, you can ask about it. You want to ask about God knows what you can ask about it. You know, I, I, this is a platform for everything for you guys to be heard and for me to talk about shit, basically. Um, Obviously, same sort of structure, though. Uh, boxing first, then MMA, then theoretically it would be um, every other question after that. Though, theoretically, I could just answer the questions from top to bottom. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try it out. So just shout out to you guys. Make sure you still hit that like button. It still sort of helps in a you know base level way, especially with how early this channel is in terms of growth and et cetera. Any sort of likes does help do not share the show on youtube though because that obviously shares the link uh share on patreon though you can definitely share on patreon share that link as much as you guys want and that can definitely help out with the show um because everyone that's now on patreon a aka you guys for the reason i'm still doing this basically um you, you guys are the reason that i'm still every day looking at topics looking at news stories reading up uh what's happening in the world watching fights, etc., doing film uh, tape and film study, you know, in preparation for fights. Yeah, th you guys are the reason I do it. So thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, let's just get into it because there's some really good questions and really good topics that uh, Nyjah and Kyle especially posted. I know Rob, shout out to Robbie Hearn, a.k.a. UK Rob from TBV. He posted some uh, 
like a couple hours ago, which I really didn't have any time to really think about. So that should be interesting. But let's get into it because uh, Kyle's first topic or question, I should say, is one that I've been thinking about off show a lot. Um, you know, how does this year compare to last year? And just overall, like, how's this year going so far? You know, it's the halfway mark, basically, it's July. You know, what do we think about this year? And this question from Kyle O'Neill Meekles or Michaels, play Michaels. Uh, also, I believe uh, he's heading up uh, Mixed Combat Radio's Twitter. I'm not 100% sold on that. That's him doing that. It's either him, Oscar Martinez, or Mike Gross, because uh, they all three have the keys to uh, the social media kingdom that is MCR. So if you see any of that sort of posting, it could be them. It could be me. Just want to shout out to you, you, know, you guys for helping out. Uh, Kyle asking, we're about halfway through 2018. What has been the fight of the year so far for boxing and for UFC and MMA? And obviously he followed up with, uh, in which fights are we most looking forward to this summer? I'll get into that separately. Uh, but best fight of the year so far for boxing. This was one that I thought was a little more difficult. The MMA and UFC one I thought was easier. There's a couple fights that really stick out in my mind that could compete, so to speak, with that title of best MMA fight, best you know UFC fight of the year. But for boxing, there really hasn't been a like a, a quote unquote standout. I want to say, um, you know, it's been, in my opinion, and again, this is just my opinion. I'm gonna throw out a couple fights, let you guys sort of decide. Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. The fight from last night, which was insane, which I will review tomorrow, tomorrow's show, uh, our usual daily show. That would be the review of weekend's fights. Um, Alex uh, Saucedo versus Lenny uh, Zapavina, um, or Lenny Z, as they called him on the ESPN telecast. That was just a fantastic fight. Definitely a round of the year for that one. Clisha Shields versus Hannah Gabriels, which we had maybe a week or two ago. Uh, Lenars versus Lomachenko. I thought that was a fantastic back and forth technical fight. Uh, Adonis Stevenson versus Badu Jack. Another good back and forth fight. And then Jesse Magdaleno versus uh, Dog Bay, which I thought was probably the best overall fight of the year, in my personal opinion, but one that I don't know is going to get the recognition. So if I had to pick one personally, it's Jesse Magdaleno versus uh, Isaac Dog Bay. But any of these other matchups, I think, could win it. I think they deserve mention at least. Um, definitely let me know in the chat, in the comment section below on Patreon, what you think. Who? What is the best boxing fight of the year so far? Um, but yeah, I, my, my official pick, Madalena versus Dogbay. So this is fantastic fight. And also, huge upset. Now we have this, you know, great sort of player in that division that we didn't realize, especially when that division is sort of weak right now. Guillermo Rigondeaux is doing whatever he's doing off in Miami. We needed some fresh names at, at bantamweight or super bantamweight, I should say. And Dog Bay is definitely one that we needed. And and he came out of nowhere and defeated an undefeated great fighter. And of the guys in the Manny Robles gym, you know, Jesse was one that I thought had the highest potential. Out of the Oscar Valdez's, Dominic Brazil's, etc., uh, even the Michael Collin, you know, of the world when Michael Collin used to be at Manny Robles, and definitely going to review Michael Collin's fight tomorrow. Je- Jesse was always the one that seemed to be the best overall package, and he was just outgunned. He got outfought against Dog Bay in a great back and forth fight. Um, just definitely one that I think should. Pr- probably win it if there's not a fight that's better in the second half of the year but that would be a shame because again this isn't like the best of fights like when you looked um at last year or the year before like there was there were standout fights this year is not so much um but definitely i think those those what five fights wilder ortiz uh, Salcedo versus lenny z Glisha Shields versus Hannah Gabriels, Lenars versus Loma, Stevenson versus Jack, and Magdaleno versus Dog Bay. All fantastic matchups that you know you can easily go back and watch again if you're a hardcore fan or if you have casual, uh, you know, fans who are f- your friends. Show them these fights because they may not have seen them, especially like the Magdaleno Dog Bay, uh, hell the Glisha Shields, Hannah Gabriels. Um, they may not have seen these fights, so definitely show them because that's what hardcore fans should do. 
Now, for MMA, I thought it was a little more clear-cut in terms of, like, a top two. And it's uh, Whitaker versus Yo Romero 2, and then Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje, uh, which was, what, in March, I want to say? Those those two fights stick out easily in my mind. Um, Poirier versus Gaethje, to me, is the better fight, and plus I just like the division better, to be honest. But Whitaker versus Romero... God, that was a fantastic back and forth fight that had, you know, controversial scorecards, etc. It had a little more drama behind it, so to speak. But Poirier Gaethje was a back and forth gladiator brawl to the death, basically. Um, fantastic matchup. That to me wins it. Shout out to them. But I would definitely want to uh quick shout out to uh Zabit Magomad uh Shaparov versus Kyle uh Boy uh oh god, what how do you pronounce that name? Boychik? Bochik? Uh, I remember watching that fight. I watched highlights of it again in preparation for the show. Fantastic matchup. If you're a, even a casual MMA fan and you want to see more, uh, I don't know, insane matchups, insane fight of the year contenders that you haven't seen yet because you're just a casual, watch that fight. I think it was on. I forget what card it was on, but definitely go check that out. That one out. Uh, Real Niger in the chat saying, "Glad you mentioned a female fight." As one of the top fights. Well, I mentioned it. I think what the that weekend of Pusher Shields, Tana Gabriel's that that was, that was a fight. That was a high level boxing fight. That was a fight of the year contender. And I mentioned it that that weekend, and I st- stand by it. I think it's that's one of those you can show casuals. You know, for all the the bad fights, because we're still in that pioneer stage of of women's boxing, where there's not that much depth. There's not that much athletic talent depth wise. For each, for each of those divisions, you see bad fights. You do. And that was not one of them. That was a fantastic matchup. Uh, that should get talked about, definitely. Now, back to uh, Kyle's question about and which fights are you most looking forward to this summer. Obviously, Canelo Triple G2. That should basically pick up where they left off because that was a fight of the year contender last year. Uh, Curtis and UFC uh, 2 24 and that Curtis is actually Kyle I, I keep forgetting that so Kyle saying UFC 224 for the Zabit fight or no sorry he is wrong 223 hashtag Kyle stats come on Kyle what are you doing here um Mike Garcia versus Robert Easter Jr. should be a fantastic matchup that should be a back and forth both guys are usually in fun fights Robert Easter Jr. has had a history of being fired the years so has sort of Mikey so uh, I, I definitely think that those two guys, or those two matchups, I should say, should definitely, you know, be the matchups of the summer. Now, obviously, in this upcoming weekend for the UFC card, there's tons of matchups that could be fight of the years. Hell, the, the Adesanya versus Brad Tavares fight uh, on Friday for the Ultimate Fighter finale, that could be fight of the year. Like, there's some matchups that are coming for the UFC. So the UFC has tons of matchups. And, and Bellator, like the Bellator uh, Walter Grand Prix you know, dep- like if we get Paul Daly versus Michael Van Page in the first round of that, like that could be fight of the year. Like there's ton, like there's tons of matchups out there for MMA that they could do. Boxing's a little bit dead right now. Like in terms of like their scheduling, it's it's only a few matchups that really piqued the interest that have been confirmed. Um, you know, are we really gonna be super psyched for AJ Pavetkin? Like we would, but we would for. AJ Wilder, you know, they're just a, a difference there.